We've all heard the good, the bad, and the ugly when it comes to dating stories, but has a person ever done or said something so cringeworthy on a date that you immediately lost interest? If so, you got the ick. Here to tell us more about this dating phenomenon and what to do when those sparks don't immediately fly is local professional matchmaker Kelly Newmare from It's Just Lunch San Francisco. Kelly, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me again, Olivia. Yes, it's so good to speak with you, and I know you are just a pro when it comes to dating advice. But I, have to ask, <laughs> I like Kelly. to think so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Kelly, I have to ask, when it comes to this ick that we keep hearing about, especially in the dating world, what exactly does that mean? So the ick has been around in the dating art world for years. It has grown more in popularity due to TikTok and reality dating shows. It's basically that instant feeling of repulsion when your date does something on a date that, and it completely grosses you out. You go from really being into them to being repulsed. Uh, depending on the person, it can be something from huge to being rude to the wait staff, which we never want to do, to the way your date chews or eats and it just completely turns you off. Oh my goodness, so it sounds like everybody out there has probably had some kind, of an, some kind of an experience with the ick, but in your experience, when do daters typically experience that on dates? It's normally fairly early in your dating relationship. So normally within the first couple of dates. Um, so it, you know, it can, it can, it can go for months, um, a couple of months into your relationship, you can start feeling it, but that's normally because you're growing apart and you believe that that person is just not your person for the long term. But you can, it can happen on date number one within five minutes. <laughs> oh my goodness, and that is pretty darn quick. But again, like I said, I'm sure somebody out there has experienced that. And Kelly, I know there's not one answer, specific answer to this next question, but what should daters do if they do experience that ick? You know, that feeling is pretty difficult to go over, but you have to kind of take a step back and decide if it's a deal breaker, right? So I tell my clients all the time, it's just lunch, that chemistry and sparks fly is not going to happen within the first, you know, date. So I would say give chemistry a chance and maybe go out on a second, third or fourth date. And if you're still feeling the ick, then you want to just go with your gut and cut it. Go with your gut and cut it. So a couple of different options there. Maybe give them a second chance or go with your gut and cut it. But when it comes to the singles out there, Kelly, let's speak directly to the singles out there now. How can they really ick-proof their upcoming dates? So I... That's a, little, that's a little difficult to do, right? Because we don't really know what our date is gonna do on a date or you know what's gonna come out of their mouth or how they're gonna act. So I feel like that's a little difficult to ick-proof your date, but I do have some tips on kind of more pre-screening and maybe dating better, right? So I've said it before and I'll say it again, you wanna be open-minded. So we know that we're never gonna get 100% of what you're looking for, right? It doesn't exist, right? So you wanna kind of really look for the good things in, some, in someone. We can do 10 amazing things and then one bad thing and that one bad thing we can focus on. So really be sure that we're not just being uber sensitive about that one thing and then focusing on the other 10 things that that person brings to the table, okay? And then you wanna change the way that you're meeting people. If you are doing the same thing over and over and over again and you're expecting a, a different result, it doesn't happen. So you wanna maybe change the way that you're meeting people. If you've been doing online dating for quite some time and it's just not working for you, then maybe make a change. Go on some meetups, you know, maybe hide a matchmaker, but just do something different. And then you also wanna be really 
confident in who you are, right? Love yourself, you know, know what you bring to the table, you know, go out there with confidence, you know, date smarter, right? You never want to settle, right? So just maybe, you know, be realistic about what you're looking for. Also, you know, again, we're not going to get everything that you're looking for. I talk to my clients all the time. At it's just lunch about, you know, have an unrealistic expectation. So you definitely want to have your expectations, be realistic and be very authentic to yourself. I love those. And those are really amazing tips to those last ones. Be confident, be your authentic self. That's really the best way to truly find love. And Kelly, as a matchmaker, doing it professionally for so many years now, what do you love most about seeing two people, no ick, none of that, but coming together and finding love? What do you, what do you like most about that? So that's what I live and breathe for. My whole life's work is to bring people together. Last Thursday, we had two marriages in one day. And uh, a couple got married at the San Francisco City Hall and then another couple in their 50s eloped in Tahoe. And I got both, you know, success stories in one day. And I was just, so elated and you know my hard work my determination love is everything to me you know and just having two people come together and find each other just makes everything in my body feel great oh man and we've had these conversations before kelly i just love that you love what you're doing and bringing people together so thank you so much we really do appreciate it Oh, thank you for having me again, Olivia. Yes, of course. If you'd like to connect with Kelly or to find the perfect match for yourself, you can head to their website. It's just lunchsanfrancisco.com. And of course,